Um, and Dee had mentioned, before we get going on the, the four events, she had mentioned that there was some uh, question about scope change and how, how it would work within Scrum scope changes and what's the concern about uh, scope creep. Okay. And so let, let's just spend a couple minutes talking about that because that is kind of an interesting conversation when it comes to Agile. People say, well, what about scope creep? So we have to, we have to start by defining scope creep, okay? And what we mean about, by scope creep is uncontrolled changes. Changes that hit our project that are not controlled. That would be scope creep, right? Okay. And we know when we're doing waterfall, up here I've diagrammed waterfall, and the green here would be our analysis, the red would be our development, and the blue would be our testing. And we go through that in the phased approach. Waterfall is a phased approach. We do all the analysis first. Once we're done with the analysis, we have, generally we have right here, we have scope block. That makes sense. We don't want any changes because we've done all of our analysis. We've looked at all of the items in the backlog we have we've read the items, we've understood the items, we've done our, our, um, our analysts has gone through them, they've quizzed the users, they understand these, they've done all of their analysis, and they're done. So from this point forward, we're going to build our project on what we have learned by, by studying these, these, uh, these backlog items. Okay? This is scope block here. So anything that would be scope changes at this point on would be scope creep, okay? Now, I've diagrammed out a sprint here. This is a one-week sprint. These blue boxes are the days. So we've got five days, and on either end of these days, I like to say that this is, our sprint is bookended by these four important events, okay? But before we get there, I want, to, I want to talk about scope change and scope creep. So at the end of this sprint, we would introduce some changes. We, we know that because we've said that the model is all about inspect and adapt. The model expects changes. We say that we value changes even late in the process. Okay, I hope you're getting that sense as you, as you go through this class. So there are some changes here, and those changes we would expect would modify this backlog. It's going to be new backlog items, new stories, updated stories. That's In some way, it's going to change this backlog. And that's a good thing. We talked about this yesterday. Because when we start out in Agile Scrum, we, we understand the backlog to be unhealthy. We expect changes. We want changes so that we can improve the backlog over time. Right? But the difference here is that once we've locked scope, we never go back and do analysis again. That's done. That's the way a waterfall phased approach works. Here we get changes. It'll update the backlog. And then the next time we sprint, we're going to have a sprint planning meeting again. And every time we have a sprint planning meeting, we go through this whole backlog. This whole thing gets constantly resorted. What's the highest priority? every single sprint before we start, we understand, we take a new look at this backlog. That's what we do when we do backlog refinement. That's the job of the product owner. It'll always get sorted, sized, sequenced with the highest priority stuff floating to the top. So if this change was really important, it would go right to the top and the very next sprint, it would probably be, be done as a part of our commitment for that sprint in the sprint backlog, right? So this is not an uncontrolled change. This is a controlled change because it went through an analysis cycle and it went through a cycle of prioritization for against all of the other backlog items and it was understood that this was important. Okay? So now there, there can be... So this is not scope creep. This is expected, planned for changes that are part of the methodology, that are part of the framework. Now, we can get some scope creep if, in fact... We, we go through this sprint planning meeting, we make our commitment, and you remember yesterday how we pulled from the product backlog to the sprint backlog, we all shook hands and we said, this is our commitment, the development team agreed, scrum master, product owner, everybody agreed, and then we started sprinting. 
after that point, if somebody, management, were sport to say, hey, we need some changes and we gotta have it in the sprint, that sort of thing, that would be scope creep, and that would be the scrum master job. For those of you who are gonna be scrum masters, say, you know, we made our commitments, we need to respect the sprint, the short is a sprint cycle, and visit with these managers, say, hey, you know, next time, it's the, the next sprint is coming up very quickly, we'll get this in the backlog, we'll get it prioritized, We'll look at for the next sprint, but we have to respect our commitment in this sprint. Okay. If for some but if for some reason the scrum master would let it in, then that would be scope creep. But that's really the only place that we see scope creep in scrum. Does that help? So it's after you made an agreement and then someone tries to change the agreement, that's an uncontrolled change and that's scope creep. That is. But the normal changes we get at the end of the sprint, every sprint, that is not scope creep. That is yeah. expected, that's planned for, that's understood, that's a part of the model. Yeah. 